It's come to my attention that people don't actually explain fiber very well, so I'm Gabriel. I am a dietitian. I've been a dietitian for four years, and I work with individuals that have a lot of gut issues. So let's say you were diagnosed with IBS and you want to find the root cause. Those are the types of patients I work with, as well as people that are just having ongoing bloating, GI issues. They might have been diagnosed with Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. Maybe they have different food allergies or sensitivities. My goal is to use evidence-based practices to fully understand your body holistically. So I always want to try to find the root cause of things and I'm really passionate about it because I want people to fully understand what their body's doing. A lot of people are actually saying that fiber is not good for you, which is a whole other issue. They are clearly wrong. We all know they're wrong, but let's explain why they're wrong and let me explain to you exactly what fiber is and why you need different types. From that, you're really going to understand why fiber is so important for so many different conditions as well as for our overall health. We're going to go over things like constipation and diarrhea, hormones, weight management, high cholesterol, blood sugar control, and even inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. A lot of times people will ask me, oh, is a fiber supplement the same as regular fiber? No, because there's so many different types of fiber. I am a huge supporter of you. If you want a fiber supplement to help you reach your goals, I always put, not always, but I put a lot of patients on fiber supplements. I take a fiber supplement myself sometimes, like when I'm traveling. Insoluble versus soluble fiber is something that people are always talking about, and I don't think a lot of people really grasp it or really understand it, and you don't really need to worry about it that much, but it might help you understand the importance of getting a diverse diet and why people that are telling you fruits and veggies and whole grains are bad for you are clueless because we need gut diversity and gut diversity means you're getting a ton of different plant sources so listen up I want to drill this into your head I'm very passionate about this you need different types of fiber because all fruits vegetables whole grains nuts and seeds have both insoluble parts and soluble parts the insoluble part I always say insoluble fart. The insoluble part is the skin and the seeds, the outside part of a fruit, vegetable, whole grain. Basically, fiber has two roles. It's either going to go right through you and help you have a bowel movement, which when people make the argument, fiber is not digestible, it's pointless, that is the point. So it's supposed to go right through you, and that's why when you poop, sometimes you might see corn in your poop, because the outside part of corn is called cellulose, which is an insoluble fiber. That's what's in the toilet. The outside part of beans, fruit, the really fibrous, tough parts, like celery, kale, those have a lot of insoluble fiber. And that's why sometimes you eat those foods and if you don't chew your food enough, you might, well, corn's different, but you might end up seeing it in the toilet. The other way fiber works is it goes right through you until it gets to your large intestine. Our large intestine is filled with a bunch of bacteria. And those bacteria want to eat. We want to feed the bacteria in our gut so we can have more good gut bacteria and we can keep the bad gut bacteria out. These are specifically called prebiotic soluble fibers. So when our gut bacteria eats these, what happens is a process called fermentation. And fermentation creates things called short chain fatty acids like butyrate, propanate, acetate. That process also releases gas. So yes, fiber can make you gassy. It can really stir things up. And too much of these types of fibers can cause a lot of GI upset. There's also some people that are really sensitive to this type of fiber. So if you're looking at different foods like a fiber one bar, they have a lot of this type of fiber in their product. Specifically, they have inulin, which is also called chicory root fiber. So that is a soluble fiber. It's also a prebiotic fiber and it ferments. So we can also call it a fermentable fiber. Too much of that can cause GI upset. Okay. But the short chain fatty acids that are created from it, when you eat it, is incredible for your body because it creates those short chain fatty acids that impact so many metabolic processes in your body, such as impacting the way your liver detoxes. It also impacts your hormones, whether that be your estrogen metabolism, your testosterone and estrogen production. It impacts things like insulin. It also impacts your hunger hormones like leptin and ghrelin. So ghrelin is what makes you hungry. Leptin is what lets you know you're full. So you really want to fuel your gut because it does so many good things in your body. The other type of soluble fiber is going to create a gel in your gut. So this is the type of fiber that creates a gel and that's really what helps form a nice type four poop and it's what can bind to things in your body. So if you have a lot of cholesterol circulating, you don't want too much cholesterol. So it can bind to cholesterol in your gut and help you poop it out. It can also bind to different toxins in your gut and help get it out. So it's really, really important for your overall body it's going to impact, like I said, your hormones, your metabolic processes. It's going to have a huge impact on your immune system and your inflammation because we want to move things out of our body that we don't need. So 
Did that answer anyone's question about fiber? Here's more examples. So I recently posted on Instagram because this woman said that insoluble fiber makes you skinny and soluble fiber makes you gassy. She said a lot of incorrect things in this video, but she also, because I'm the type of person that works with a ton of people all the time, I'm always trying to see someone's point of view. I don't think she's very educated in this topic, but I, because of the way I think, I can make an argument for what she said in that capacity because if you think about it, the insoluble fiber is what's making you really go to the bathroom it's really making you poop if you have too much of it it can make you shit your pants so for people that are like oh i lost weight on this detox diet because you're shitting your pants so i mean there is some way that that makes sense but yeah we don't want to do that and then soluble fiber yes types of soluble fiber are fermentable which can cause gas but we need both to have a really healthy gut microbiome you don't want too much of either of them and then a lot of people that have constipation or diarrhea are told that they need more soluble or more insoluble and it gets really confusing when foods contain all of these sources so let's say you have crohn's or ulcerative colitis let's say you're in an active flare-up and that means you have active inflammation in your gut and you're really not tolerating a lot of fiber rich foods which can happen to a lot of patients that are dealing with inflammatory bowel disease crohn's or ulcerative colitis we used to recommend a low residual low fiber diet but we're finding that that's actually not what we do now i'll put up some studies but unless you have an active stricture Fiber is actually really good for you. You just want the right sources. So you want more soluble. How do we do that when food has both types? We peel the skin on fruits and veggies. We don't consume fruits and veggies with seeds. We might stay away or change the form of nuts or seeds. So you might do better with maybe almond butter than you would almonds. Because when you're blending things, you're breaking down the fiber a little bit. So it's a little more digestible for you. Same thing with cooking. People that are having a lot of issues, whether you have inflammatory bowel disease or not, you're having issues tolerating fiber. You still need fiber. We just have to be gentle. So we might cook your veggies, peel them, get rid of the seeds. Cooking is going to break down the fiber a little bit so it's a little easier for your body to digest. You also obviously wanna work on chewing your food more thoroughly because the more you chew your food, the less your body has to break down. So the whole process can go a little smoother but everyone needs fiber still because of all the other processes I just talked about. It's super important and we're learning that what we used to recommend isn't really accurate anymore because we want people to fuel their body. What we have people with inflammatory bowel disease do is we try to avoid a lot of those foods that we're not exactly sure about yet. There are some studies on how, for instance, like carrageenan, that's a food additive. How carrageenan did increase inflammation for individuals that already had colitis or inflammatory bowel disease. We are questioning sugar alcohols, artificial sweeteners, different food additives, different gums, because we don't know the impact on the gut microbiome. So we know that fiber rich foods, whole foods are good for us, but we're not sure about the other stuff. So for my patients that have inflammatory bowel disease, I always try to educate them on this. I'm never trying to fear monger or make them scared of foods. Definitely some patients are gonna be more strict with it than others. But it's all about finding the balance and getting rid of a lot of the processed foods you eat while still maybe enjoying in moderation the stuff that you enjoy is going to still have a huge impact on your overall inflammation in your body and it's going to be a positive one. You don't need to completely just cut everything out cold turkey to the point where it's really impacting you socially and mentally because that is something that you can say you want to eat healthy all you want but I know for a fact if you are constantly thinking about the food you're putting in your body to the point where you can't even enjoy your life you might say you are, but I know for me, when I've done that, it's not an easy game. It's not an easy mindset to be in because it's like, yeah, there's certain foods that you might need to avoid. Maybe you have celiac disease. That mindset shift is a little different, but when it's more so just, oh, this causes inflammation, this is bad for me, blah, blah, blah. You really want to find a really happy balance and you don't want it to be hurting you socially to the point where you don't even enjoy going out to eat with people because you also have to understand there's a huge social component to food and cultural component that just telling people to take out all these foods is super ignorant and so disrespectful to people because just because you did it doesn't mean other people can avoid these foods on a day-to-day -day basis. People just make it sound so easy and I totally know that it's not easy. But the more you learn about the foods and the more you learn about what could potentially be causing issues in your gut, whether we have credible research on it or not, just knowing that we're questioning it can really help people make better choices or make the swap to maybe a milk that doesn't have these added ingredients in them. My point with that was, okay, if you're having diarrhea, 
you want to increase your soluble fiber but have less insoluble fiber so you should first of all just consider cooking your vegetables because that's just gonna break down the fiber and make your gut feel a little better but then if you peel the fruits and vegetables you do white rice over brown rice because the outside part is also considered the insoluble part and you get rid of the seeds, you're going to tolerate those fibers a little better. If you're more constipated, then maybe you want to increase that insoluble fiber. So you are going to look for maybe a kiwi because it has seeds in it that has more insoluble fiber. You might want to incorporate more nuts and seeds. You might want to incorporate more diverse whole grains like quinoa that has the full grain intact. So if you're looking at a rice kernel, the outside part's the insoluble and then the inside part's the soluble. Barley, oats, quinoa, all of those foods, if they're in the whole grain form, that means they contain the insoluble fiber. Just knowing this and learning this can help you in navigating it and it can also help you in understanding which fiber supplement to buy. I saw someone ask a question on someone else's post about this where they were like, is Miralax and Benefiber okay? So Miralax is a laxative. Very different thing I can talk about another time. It helps you poop, but it's a laxative. So it has a different mechanism, whereas fiber is an okay thing to incorporate more often. Beta fiber is specifically made of wheat dextrin, which is a soluble fiber. If we think back to what I talked about earlier, you either have an insoluble fiber that goes right through you, you have a soluble fiber that goes through you, it stops in your colon, it ferments, and that can create gas and also create short chain fatty acids, which fuels a bunch of metabolic processes, or you have soluble fiber that creates a gel-like substance in your gut. Kind of help bind things together. Wheat dextrin is a soluble fiber that ferments, so it can cause you to be a little more gassy if you do it too often. But a mucil has psyllium husk, which is the soluble fiber that creates a gel. If you are constipated, this one might not really help push things out for you. So yeah, there's just so many things that I could talk about. Please drop your fiber questions below. I hope this helped explain things a little better to you. Yeah, fiber's so awesome and gut health is so complex and I honestly feel like I learned something new every day with it. I have been working with GI patients for about three years now, so I have a incredible grasp on this. Working with clients has really helped challenge me in seeing what works for some people, doesn't work for everyone else. We have to try different things. And there's so many connections with the gut microbiome and your immune system and your inflammatory response and your metabolic health and your hormone health. It's just so fascinating. And I just want to share the information with people and I want more people to learn about it because I want people to know how important a diverse diet is and how nutrition is complex and you really have to learn about it in order to make the best choices for yourself. So yeah, if you could share this, that would also be awesome because I wanna help as many people as I can. And I think this type of topic, there's a lot of misinformation about it whether that's intentional or not it's just a complex topic and I want to really help people understand it on a more digestible <laughs> no pun intended but kind of digestible level so they can feel really good when I encourage people to eat more diversity in their diet they aren't really sure what that means and I really do mean multiple types of whole grains multiple types of fruits vegetables nuts seeds beans different colors of fruits and vegetables even different meats rotating those that all really just gives your body all the nutrients it needs and it really just proves that there is no one best diet and yeah I'm really passionate about this and I hope you enjoyed this video I'm hoping I'm just gonna post it and hardly edit it's kind of a ramble but I just want to get the content out there if anyone wants to help me edit my videos message me because I want to get all the information out that I can and also grow my business and create something that I'm brainstorming right now and I need to create but it's hard when I still want to show my face on social media so oh I scared Bello. That's Bello. <laughs> okay. Bye.